All right, let's shift gears and bring you this now. In fact, a focus uh, at the long-standing partnership between South Africa and Switzerland in science and innovation. Key stakeholders from both countries have convened uh, in Bern, just outside Zurich, to reassess and bolster their collaboration. Our colleague here at the SABC News Channel, Sakina Kamwendo, is in Switzerland uh, and joins us now live as we delve into the history and future of this partnership um, on this Tuesday morning, and Sakina, it's lovely to see you. Help us break down the nature of this relationship and I suppose the potential that is still around insofar as advancing science and innovation is concerned. Well, good morning, Ayanda, and welcome to Bern in Switzerland. And yeah, whilst you guys are freezing out in South Africa, the sun is literally beating down on me here in Bern. This, of course, the federal capital of Switzerland. And uh, just behind me, uh, you will see this magnificent building, splendid. Uh, and, of course, that is the seat of uh, the political capital here in Switzerland. And we, of course, here for the South African Science and Innovation uh, trip to Switzerland. And this is about South Africa and Switzerland collaborating on science innovation innovation and technology, a relationship that dates back to 2007 under the then Minister of Science and Technology, Minister Musibudi Mangena at that time. And of course, this has continued and now in its uh, umpteenth iteration, so to speak, and so much work being done, so many collaborations with many of our universities in South Africa and Swiss universities. And we're looking at uh, some of these, especially in the issues of climate change and as we can see the sort of weather that we're experiencing in South Africa in a province like KZN in a city like Durban for snow this time of year that speaks volumes and this is what science is all about and all of the research that is going on the money that's being put to it the collaborations that are being done is in order for us to understand better and better be equipped to deal with all of this but of course we fresh out of session in fact we're just on a break because this morning we learned more about the Swiss political system and taking us through it is with me and he's leading the session this morning ambassador claudio fisher and he is a head of international relations and multilingualism uh, division at the parliamentary services here in switzerland ambassador thanks so much for your time and thanks for speaking to us as sabc news it's up to me to thank you thank you very much welcome to switzerland again so it was so fascinating listening to the Swiss political system and how it is composed as opposed to our South African system. And, and just some of the points, you know, that I noted here. Um, you speak of a perfect bicameralism. So talk to us about what that means and how the Swiss parliament and, and, and politics basically work here. Thank you very much. Yeah, like the South African Parliament, we have also a two-chamber system. And in Switzerland, as the federalism is extremely important, the second chamber, representing the cantons, which would be the provinces in your country, uh, uh, play a major, major role. So that's important that they they have the same power in the parliament. That's why every project of law in the Swiss parliament has to go through both chambers in identical way. It's a little bit like the American system. In Europe, there are also some countries like Italy have the same system. But for us, it's extremely important. Mm. And, and, and of course, what we found very interesting was uh, when you spoke about the personification of power that is somewhat frowned upon here in Switzerland, which is very different from our own. So what do you mean by that, that you frown upon the personification of power? Yeah, it's very different from many counties, I would say, where you have an elite, a political elite, and this is absolutely okay. In Switzerland, we never had a, 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 this elite. So the power is, is uh, 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 you exert it one year and then uh, again you go back to your former uh, work uh, as a minister for example if you are in government but also as as a, as a MP if you are a speaker uh, uh, in the parliament and this is something which is important to us in order that all also political parties and so on have the possibility to exert that but for a short period of time. So 
When you think back home about uh, the number of ministers that we have who also have deputy ministers, in some instances, two deputy ministers, in Switzerland, there are only seven ministers. So please talk to us about that system. Yeah, Switzerland is a, a result of a historical development. And uh, 1848, the first uh, constitution has been established. And uh, in this constitution, it's foreseen that we have seven ministers. And nothing has changed since there. And so you can imagine that one minister is in charge of many, many, many uh, uh, subjects. Uh, but uh, I think there's no will also in the population because the population should have to agree on a change of the constitution and to, to increase the number of ministers. There's no will in the population to change that because everybody says it has worked very well. There are no deputy ministers, uh, but there are many state secretaries which act, in fact, like deputy ministers, but they are employees at the end, civil servants. Uh, again, it's a system which worked for us, uh, but at the same time, you can imagine that the agenda of a minister is, is, is very huge, it's very complicated, and especially he needs an excellent administration behind him to prepare the work. Yeah, I think for us that's a bit of a shocker because, you know, we, we, we uh, kind of grapple with thinking how do seven ministers then do all of the work? So it must be quite taxing on them. It is, it is. And uh, I think the administration plays an important role. I think we have a very good uh, administration with excellent people working behind the scene. And, uh, and uh, I'll doing the work in order that the minister can do his job then and really have this representation, uh, uh, which is an important part of, of his job. And so it, it, it works. But to be honest, uh, the world is getting more and more complicated. The issues are getting more and more complicated. I think it's certainly a discussion, uh, maybe possible reform also of the government, which has to be, to be done uh, in the near future also in Switzerland. And get this, Ayanda. The president, as uh, Ambassador Fisher was explaining, so the president only serves for one year. And during that year, if I understood you correctly, Ambassador, they still get to do whatever ministerial portfolio they hold whilst being president. That's correct. Uh, so um, they not only the portfolio, and they are also president. President means representing Switzerland abroad as a head of state during this year, but also means to chair the uh, weekly uh, meeting of the government. So these are the two main tasks. You have more. First of all, you are minister of your department. So, you see, a lot being done with a lot fewer uh, resources in terms of the man or woman power, person power that is expanded. But of course, you know the saying, neutral like Switzerland. So, uh, still very much the case for Switzerland, trying to be neutral in most matters? I think so. I mean, I mean we have a, a neutral policy. This is... Uh, allows you also to take some decisions which maybe you haven't taken before, like the sanctions of the EU, support the sanctions of the EU after the aggression work of Russia against uh, Ukraine. And then you have the neutrality laws, uh, uh, the neutrality law in general, which allows you some things and some others not. But it's clear that uh, since uh, some years, uh, I mean, neutrality has always been discussed a lot. And I think in principle, we all agree that we are a neutral country. Certainly, there are some, some issues that will, will have to be discussed for the future. Well, Ayanda, I tell you what, it was quite an interesting session this morning uh, with Ambassador Fisher uh, and just walking us through that political system and how, uh, you know, a canton uh, like Zurich, which is, of course, a province in our speak, uh, would have the same uh, number of, uh, you know, representatives uh, with another canton that has maybe 136,000 people and, and how that system is weighted. So it's very interesting and it was interesting to be able to compare and contrast. But of course, we continue on this trip and uh, we'll be speaking to more people, ambassadors, uh, both from South Africa and Switzerland later on again this evening, uh, where we'll be able to get into more of the political issues of the day with them. And then of course, tomorrow we continue on to Basel, uh, which is where we actually get into the universities and speak about those collaborations in detail between South Africa and Switzerland. So Ayanda, from a splendid burn, it's back to you in studio. Yeah. All right, Sakina Commando still chasing the sun. You see, life just there from Bern in Switzerland for now. We're